Welcome back to News 46. Worldwide euthanasia and physician-assisted suicide are increasingly being legalized, but remain controversial. A new study examined how the public's attitude towards the practices has changed, as well as what types of patients that are using the procedures and why. This health tip is brought to you by Desert View Hospital and Mountain Valley Physicians Group. Don't put your health on hold. We have time for you. Call us to schedule your appointment, 775-751-7100. There's been an increase in legalization of euthanasia and assisted suicide in developed countries. Both are legal in the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, Colombia, and Canada. Switzerland, along with five U.S. states, Oregon, Washington, Montana, Vermont, and California, offer physician-assisted suicide. Dr. Ezekiel Emanuel and his colleagues from the University of Pennsylvania reviewed all available data on these interventions from the late 1940s through 2016. Public support for euthanasia-assisted suicide is quite interesting. Uh, it's more supportive of euthanasia. It increased from 1947 to about 1990 uh, and then plateaued. And over the last few years, there's been about a 5 or 10 percent decline in support. The interventions are rare. In the Netherlands and Belgium, less than 5 percent of all deaths are by assisted suicide or euthanasia. In Washington and Oregon, only 3 in 1,000 deaths are by assisted suicide. However, not every case is reported, so it's impossible to tell if these are true rates. 70 to 75 percent of the patients who get assisted suicide or euthanasia, no matter what the country, tend to be patients with cancer. It's people who really have sort of given up on life or they fear the loss of autonomy and dignity. They tend to be older, white, well-educated, and well-insured. We know these aren't flawless procedures. We know that they have uh, mistakes and complications. Uh, we just don't know the exact rate and the full nature of them. Worries about widespread abuse of these practices that people who don't have insurance or poor people uh, might be predominantly targeted do not seem to be borne out by the data. Dr. Emanuel also says these practices occur whether they are legal or not. It behooves us to actually look at the practices and try to understand how they work, how well they work, what the problems are before we rush to legalize it in a lot of other countries. Catherine Dolph, The JAMA Report. Thank you, Catherine. Study authors say public support for these interventions is about 65 percent, but the support is much less among physicians. Two bailiffs and a suspect are dead after a courthouse shooting in St. Joseph, Michigan. The shooting happened on the third floor of the courthouse. Members of the public went for shelter once the shooting occurred, and brave officers were able to come to the rescue and bring the shooter down. A deputy and a civilian also were shot and sustained non-life-threatening injuries. There are no more details about how the shooter obtained a weapon or how the shooting happened at this time. A single vehicle rollover on North Highway 160 required emergency crews to attend to the driver and only occupant of the car. Friday night we started off with uh, several incidents, but the most serious was a one vehicle rollover that occurred on Highway 160 North, just in the area of the, the Crystal Turnoff. Uh, on arrival, crews found a one vehicle rollover. The patient had self extricated, however, required transport to our local hospital. Do you know the cause of the accident at this point? It was being investigated, but I don't know the exact mechanism which caused the rollover. One occupant? One occupant that we're aware of. And then uh, they, they were able to get themselves out of the vehicle. Uh, they were transported by ground here to Desert View? Yes, we had placed Mercy Air 21 on standby as a precautionary measure, but the investigation and assessment completed by the medical team. Uh, warranted that they could go by ground to the local hospital. And fire broke out in the dense brush on BLM land this morning, just off Gamebird Road. This morning, uh, before 7 a.m., we were dispatched a report of an unknown type fire on the BLM land in the area of Games, um, Gamebird and Blag. On our arrival, we found approximately one acre, maybe just a little less, of a combination fuels, mesquite, and um, low growth and uh, the crews made good at fashion with that. They notified BLM, but the local crew has actually been assigned outside the, the state of Nevada for a larger brush fire. Our crew crews managed the fire today. And so BLM local crews were to another fire in, um, outside of Nevada? It's my understanding they were deployed as, as of yesterday to a Colorado fire. And then um, tell me about the mesquite, because that tends to be a little bit of an issue when you have uh, the fire in mesquite trees. It can be hot burning. Uh, it's very easy. It's, it's a, a lot of hollow areas within the woods. So you have to be real careful. We also watch out for the root structures. But in this particular case, it was a pretty straightforward fire. 
Uh, we used both of our off-road uh, suppression vehicles, kept a larger apparatus on the hard surface, that being Game Bird Road, as water supply, made quick fashion of it. And do you guys keep it, an eye on that because the mesquite trees can tend to kick up later? Yeah, if we were very, very careful to watch for wind conditions as they may develop today, but if, you know, occasionally we'll have one of our rigs go by and take a look to see if there's anything going on with that area. Do you know how that fire started? Uh, no, it's under investigation. It was a BLM ranger uh, in the area, and he responded as well. And another brush fire occurred on the west side of town over the weekend. This one was started by fireworks. Chief Lewis explains. Saturday evening, we had a dispatch report of a grass fire in the area of Rio Rico and Barney. Uh, crews arrived on location and found the brush fire. They quickly extinguished it, and it was determined through the investigation that was related to fireworks. And so, uh, did you find any suspects? We did. And, uh, we identified a suspect. The suspect admitted to using fireworks, which then caused the uh, subsequent brush fire. That issue is being handled within the sheriff's office. Were these legal fireworks or illegal fireworks? Uh, I don't know exactly. They were that was part of the ongoing investigation as to what type they were exactly. Uh, what was left of us was detonated material. How much of uh, the area got burnt? It, it actually went into cover two properties, and uh, so it was less than an acre, uh, you know, well less than an acre, but it, it did impact the grass cover on two. It did not impact any structures or fencing, I think, a lot of Do you know if the sheriff is investigating as far as a crime is committed? Well, they're investigating it because that's part of their bailiwick on the, the use of fireworks within the valley. When we come back from this break, we'll have information on the back-to-school health fair.